Imagine an actor was asked to imitate you for a day. They need to do all the things you do, behave the way you do. And the only research you can provide is a book that gives them the know-how to act exactly like you. What would you write in this book? Listing facts about yourself won't be enough. In order for the actor to imitate you, you'd need to record how you do things. We call this procedural knowledge or knowing how. And when we write down procedural knowledge, we end up with what's called an algorithm. An algorithm is a sequence of instructions for how to do things. Throughout history, we've communicated our know-how through storytelling. At first, these stories were shared orally. Starting with the earliest forms of painting, people depicted stories as images of things happening across time. At first, we did this with picture sequences, and later, letter sequences. But we can think of the key stages in a story as steps. And this is the basis of algorithmic thinking, the ability to break how we do things into a step-by-step -step procedure. In the most basic form, an algorithm is just a linear sequence of steps, a single pathway of action. But now think of something more complex that you do, which can't be easily expressed as a simple list of steps. When you try writing down the steps for how you do these complex things, you'll notice you won't follow the same linear pathway each time. There is a conditional future. Practically, this means the word if will pop up in your list of steps. And every time we say if, it means our pathway of action will branch into possible futures. No matter how far back you look in our written records, you will find if-then pairings used to describe our knowledge about the world. Early records of omens were messages from the gods about the future. For example, in ancient Greece, it was believed that the gods made decisions in an assembly concerning the course of the world's affairs and the fate of human beings. And they delivered these predictions about the future in the form of omens, for example, they are typically structured as if, followed by a sign in the natural world, and then, followed by the resulting event. Across cultures, ancient documents have been discovered which contain lists of omens that people could consult to better understand the fate of their lives. And they can be viewed as an early form of science, or proto-science, an attempt to describe the world. So it's these if-then statements, or what we call conditional statements, that will help you define the complex things you do. And with that, we have everything we need to define algorithms. Algorithms are, one, a sequence of steps, and two, these steps can contain conditional statements. And you can describe anything that is describable using just these two concepts. No matter how an algorithm is run, a human actor following instructions or a computer following machine code, at some level, it's understood to be following discrete steps resulting in a pathway of execution. And each step in this pathway takes some amount of time. So the expected number of steps it takes a process to finish defines the time resource or time complexity of an algorithm. And while a machine or human is following or running an algorithm, it may need to store or retrieve information which must be recorded in memory. And memory, no matter the form, takes some amount of space. For example, when you follow the steps in the algorithm for multiplication or long division, at certain steps you need to write down extra numbers that allow you to arrive at the answer. These extra numbers are the memory resource of those algorithms. And the total amount of memory needed, measured as the number of symbols, defines the space resource or space complexity of an algorithm. 
So when we run any algorithm, no matter what it describes, it results in some pathway of action. And in the modern study of algorithms, we always come back to two big questions. One, how much time and space does it need? And two, how can we be sure that the output of our algorithm is correct? Because anytime we hit a conditional statement, before we can take our next step, we'll need to confirm at some level if something is true or not. But how do we ever really know if something is true or false? And this requires some form of logic. Don't suppose for a moment, at least I don't, I'm not naive enough to suppose that the International Business Machines Corporation made this machine to play checkers. It made this machine as a working model of decision-making machines. Such machines could conceivably be used to play other games than checkers. The business game, the war game. The game of determining when to press the button for Armageddon. For the thermonuclear war.